Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I'm going to show you how to get some of your older compost jump started so that come the end of the season you can use it in your beds. You also have it for the spring. That's number one. Number two, what is a chore that I need to do in August? That's a question I get asked a lot. If you haven't set up a compost station and you have the room, this is just a dog pen that it's open now. I hit it with the lawnmower. It's a little bent, but I'll close it back up. Some fresh stuff will get on here. This compost pen gets filled with lots of dirt and scraps and all kinds of stuff. I use this to fill my beds. It does really well. So August, if you haven't set up a composting pen or pile, you don't need anything fancy. You can just use a pile. We're going to talk about that in a second. Just get that set up. So come August, we're still in high heat. A lot of this I've started last year, was doing really well. It's browned, it's broken down, not completely broken down. High temperatures, less rain, it hasn't been kept moist. The process of decay has just stopped. But I'm going to clean out the weeds, they'll get composted. All these browns are going to come over to here. This is what I do just about every year. I'll put a layer of the browns. Then I'm going to go cut some grass, put a nice layer of green grass on there. Always untreated lawn. That's important. You don't want to put chemicals into your compost pile. Then some more of these browns that are right here. And I'm just going to make a massive pile. The whole trick is to soak it down, make sure there's a lot of moisture in there, put a tarp over it, and just let it sit there. So I will get August, September, October, even November of letting it all break down into something nice that I will put into my beds to, win to sort of like do the winterizing, but I'll put compost down. It may not be fully broken down, but that it will continue to sit there through December, January, February, March, break down, give back. Whatever I don't use under here will get more time to break down. Worms will have moved in and come spring, I'll just have a nice pile of compost here. Right now there's nothing, you know, and the number one thing that stops people from composting is one, we just don't get started and two, we overthink it. So browns, greens, brown, green, lots of moisture, cover it up, let it go. We did our part. We did our August chore and there's going to be tons of compost to use. And please subscribe. I'll show you how I use it in the garden. This is the compost that's left. I used most of this, you know, earlier in the year. It's just beautiful stuff. So I'm going to move this out because I don't want to cover it over and not be able to use it. But it's all nicely broken down. This will go into containers, but I'm going to put this somewhere where I can get, get to it and use it for the rest of the uh, summer. But this space is going to be the new pile. First layer is down. It's all the weeds that were in this space. And then just really a bag full of grass. This is just from a push mower. You want to make the pile of greens, in this case, grass. Now, if you don't have grass and you just want to take care of all the stuff that may be dried out, you're just going to have to put your browns down, soak it well, still cover it. That's going to be more of a cold composting process. And it's not going to break down as fast as what we're doing here. By adding the greens, the grass, it's going to heat up. It's going to bring in lots of microbes and it's just going to break this pile down more quickly so that it's more available come, you know, the end of fall, etc. You don't want to over mound the grass. Maybe in this case, since we're doing piles and letting it sit, I don't know, four inches, maybe five inches. If you go really beyond that, it's going to compact. It's going to become anaerobic. It's going to smell and it's not going to do a whole lot. You want it loose. So first layer is the grass. Let's just say whatever, two, four, maybe six inches at most. And then you're going to put another layer, four to six inches of the browns. When you drop the browns on, you're going to mix it in slightly to the grass. So it's not pure layers, but they kind of combined. This combination of greens, browns, and water will really help this break down. What I want to show you is remember that little pile that was there? And this is why I recommend composting. As soon as you have the space, look at everything that I took out of there. This is just beautiful stuff. It's going to go, uh, it's going to go fill a metal raised bed, which I'll show you right after this segment. Saving me easily 80, $100, and I'm putting in great stuff. So composting is going to save you so much money. And I know that it can be difficult to mentally get started because you're thinking, you know, this isn't going to be ready for a year or two or three. I'll just buy it. Get it started. Time goes by, hopefully you're alive and kicking two, three years from now. But once you get everything rolling, it's just a continuous supply of beautiful compost like this. All right, let's put down the brown layer. 
in order to fill this with topsoil, potting soil, quality stuff, it could easily cost 80 or $100. I have enough compost that I just pulled out of that space to fill up my metal raised bed. You save money and it's gonna be a great place for onions to grow next year. This is essentially the process. We're just gonna keep putting in layers, build up the mound. I recommend if you can get, you know, three feet high, four feet high, that's perfect. When we're halfway through, we're gonna soak everything down and then when we finish, we'll soak everything again. This is the compost coming out of the bin right over there. You can see there's some grass in there that's still a little bit green. Other stuff broken down nicely. Plastic from cardboard, but it's loose. That's all you're doing is putting a pile in there. So the exact amount, four inches, six inches, doesn't matter. You just want oxygen to be in here and you would take your shovel or whatever you're using and just mix this much, you know, right into that layer of grass, throw down some more compost, and then we would go to the green. And I'm just gonna keep rotating all the way up. The most important thing is not the ratios. This is not true hot composting. It's just getting this all jump started. And this will drive some of you crazy. One of the biggest mistakes we make in gardening is we think we have to be perfect. We are just putting in layers. So this is another bag full of the grass clippings. And you know, that's too much. As we knock it around, maybe some falls out of the pile. Some might only be an inch, quarter inch. That's all you really have to do. Another layer, and I'm slowly moving the pile over this way. Again, everything doesn't have to be perfect. The beauty of this is that nature's been decomposing anything living for billions of years. So please don't overthink it. Just get that pile started. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna finish this up to about the height that I recommend. Um, at this point, maybe another level, spend about 10 minutes soaking it in. I don't think I need to show you that. But you want to soak in the entire pile, and then when you're done, we'll soak it in again for about 10 minutes. You just want to make sure the whole area is saturated. And again, I don't think I need to show that on video. But, you know, nice and damp, and then we're good to tarp it up. I was able to get all the brown materials out of those two bins, and I have a nice, good-sized pile, great base, and you want it to just look something like this. You really do want to spend a good 10 minutes watering it in, making sure everything is moist. If you don't, it's gonna stay dry and it's just gonna decompose slower. So you could, you know, add on a good month or so to the compost process by just not keeping this moist. So I'm gonna soak this in for about another five minutes, get the tarp on top and I'll talk about the tarp and whether or not you need it. This is the number one chore for me in August. I'd like to have this done really by August 1st. It got done a day or two early. You end up with beautiful compost, like right here. This is easily $80, $100 worth of stuff if you were going to buy bag stuff to fill beds and containers. It makes a huge difference. We'll talk about the tarp in a second, pros and cons. These bins are emptied out. I'll be putting in leaves and grass in a more specific ratio than we did right here because I really want that to heat up and break down quickly. So that's a whole different video. I actually have videos on that. This is kind of a warm composting, somewhere between cold and hot. We just got the grass in there. I like using a tarp. I found it makes a big difference. It keeps it dark, everything stays moist, and I think it breaks down quickly. And you know, this is what I've been doing for a couple of years. You end up with something like that. However, keeping a tarp over it does create a habitat for mice and even moles and voles, and sometimes snakes move in there. Snakes usually aren't a problem. I like them because they kill moles, voles, and mice. If you put on the tarp, once a week, move it, disturb the top, that keeps rodents and problems out. You don't have to use a tarp. If you're not gonna use a tarp, you just wanna keep the pile moist and maybe areas that it rains more and it's a little bit cooler, that's okay. But I do, or I did find, and do find actually, that the tarp does speed up the breakdown, so I do like using it. And you just wanna weight it down so the wind doesn't blow it away, you know, all that kind of stuff. But this is a big chore to do in August. Let it sit 90, 120 days, use it for your fall beds, let it sit longer, use it in your spring beds, and again, you just see the beautiful stuff that comes out of there. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my blog, it's linked below, The Rusted Garden Journal for more information on composting, and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. If you have the space, I really recommend getting started with compost. Thanks for watching.